Getting your first prime weapon can be a very special experience. I remember getting the Lex Prime together with the Bratton Prime and thinking oh my god I have such an amazing setup now I'm gonna be able to tear through everything. And while I wasn't able to tear through everything the Lex Prime did not disappoint. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this mastery rank 8 secondary weapon, the Lex Prime. I'm gonna be covering a cheap build, something affordable that anybody can build, but of course we also have a souped up setup with more expensive mods. That being said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides follow a new player friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So if you're a veteran of the game, and already know this stuff, you can skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Lex Prime. Let's begin by having a look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that I'm simply going to be taking a couple of free shots. The Lex Prime is a pinpoint accurate weapon. A lot of players prefer it simply because of this high accuracy. And it packs one hell of a punch as well. But as you can see, the recoil is quite large on this one. So you gotta wait for it to stabilize in order to hit the exact same point. Of course, this is mod not included. Other than that, you have 8 shots in a clip and you also get about 2 seconds worth of reload. And that's pretty much it. Basically, the Lex Prime is the deagle of Warframe. Let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is gonna be 60 out of 60. If your Prime Lex has 30 out of 30, then jump into actions and install an Auto King Catalyst. This one can be found from alerts, invasions, or if you're lucky, from the daily sortie. And you can also pay 20 plat to have this one plugged in. My weapon has been forma a total of 4 times, but for the weapon build I'm recommending you guys free forma is more than sufficient. The accuracy of the Lex Prime is 16.0, now for a pistol this is pretty standard, however the Lex Prime once again is known for its fabled accuracy. Back then however, there wasn't an Arca Cisco, so if you're interested in a super accurate secondary weapon, check out the Arca Cisco. Critical chance 25% which is solid, more than solid, it's pretty good. Critical multiplier of 2.0 which once again is very good, a fire rate of 2 with a magazine of 8 and a reload of 2.3 seconds. Now, you will see that the stats for the Lex Prime are fairly balanced, that is chance 25% as well and a whole lot of default damage on the weapon with the highest being Puncture. Puncture deals extra damage to heavily armored targets such as Grenier so this is definitely nice. Slash unfortunately is a tad low, if I was to slap on something like additional slash with maim you will see that it still won't compete with Puncture. Even if I was to slap on 4 maims it still wouldn't compete. That being said though, let's start slapping on some mods starting with mandatory mods, Hornet Strike, 220% extra damage. Next we're gonna go to multi shot, the best thing on mostly everything. Barrel Diffusion as well as Lethal Torrent. The additional fire rate from Lethal Torrent doesn't make a huge benefit, sometimes it's a little bit detrimental simply because of that huge recall the Lex Prime has, but we can mod for that as well. We're totaling 180% multi shot between these two mods. That means that with each and every shot, we have a guaranteed second bullet and an 80% chance at a third bullet. Next, we're gonna go to crit chance and crit damage with pistol gambit and, of course, target cracker. Now, unfortunately, the standard version of target cracker, from my point of view at least, is a tad underwhelming. Only 60% critical damage. If there comes a choice between should I get prime target cracker first or prime pistol gambit then I would suggest you go for prime target cracker. This would make a bigger DPS increase. And of course if you have prime mods just simply go straight on ahead and use your prime mods. 55% critical chance with a multiplier of 3.2 and a status chance of 55.3. This is a shot status chance generated by the multi shot we slapped on the Weapon with Battle Diffusion and Lethal Torrent. Next we're gonna go to Elemental Damage. And Elemental Damage should always be applied on a weapon depending on circumstance. Where are you going, who are you fighting and so on and so forth. For example, the Infested have 4 health types, each with their own unique vulnerabilities and resistances to damage. In general against Infested, I would recommend you build Heat, especially if you have Prime Heated Charge. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. In general, however, the Lex Prime is not the ideal weapon to be taken against the Infested. There's a lot of them and they kinda tend to swarm you with their number, so try AoE weapons heavily modded into heat. When it comes to Corpus faction, they have big shields, and a smart idea against Corpus in general is to build Toxin or Gas which will bypass their shields entirely and deal damage to their health. The Grenier currently are seen as kinda the toughest targets in Warframe. They have two armor types, Alloy which is weak to radiation damage 
and Ferrite which is weak to corrosive damage. Against Grenier, more often than not, your safest bet is to build corrosive which is the elemental combo between electricity and toxin. So let's have a look. We have an option. We can go for the 90 mods which offer more damage or the dual stat mods which offer status chance and a bit less damage. It really depends on what kind of content you're gonna be doing. There's a general rule in Warframe which is not correct 100% of the time but it goes something like this. If you're going 100 under then simply go for the 90 mods. Over 100 then go for the 60, 60 mods. And since we are gonna be shooting 100 plus we're gonna go for the 60, 60 mods. Jolt, this one unfortunately is only obtainable from Barokitir the Void Trader. He brings it once every two months from what I've seen, something like that. When you do see Battle bring this one, pick up multiple copies if you want to make a bit of a profit later on. Currently on PC, Jolt is going for about 120 plat, so it is quite pricey. You don't have Jolt, right? Let's say, let's assume you do not have Jolt, then forget about it and simply use Convulsion instead. But again, the best choice uh, for 100 plus is going to be with Jolt. Next, we're going to go to Toxin. Pistol Pestilence, 60% Toxin and 60% Status Chance. This one is a lot more affordable and easier to obtain. You can farm this one from Corrupted Vor in the Void. From the Trade Chat, this one goes for about 10 to 15 plat. Now my Status Chance weight went up to 89.3% and I made Corrosive on the weapon, 1613. We gotta keep in mind what is the stat proc priority in Warframe. Keep in mind that the physical types, Impact, Puncture and Slash, have a 4 times greater chance of proccing over elemental types such as Corrosive. So when you're looking at Puncture, look at that 4300-ish, something like that. In fact, a lot higher than the Corrosive. So the proc priority in this case will be Puncture, Corrosive, followed by Slash and Impact. At least it's not Impact, so there you go. The last mod slot on a weapon is usually what I like to call the option slot. Plug into this one whatever you feel comfortable with. Considering the downsides of the Lex Prime, a good idea would be to reduce the recoil of the weapon and you can do that very easily with steady hands. Common mod, it's not expensive, it's not hard to get. You should be getting this one just by playing the game. Minus 60% weapon recoil and this will make the weapon a whole lot more manageable, a whole lot more usable and let's keep in mind that even though the Lex Prime with a single shot does a tremendous amount of, amount of damage for a secondary weapon, if you miss it or because of the recoil when then it's not really gonna account for much. So steady hands is definitely a worthwhile option. But perhaps you're the kind of man that wants more critical chance. All of us love crit because well big numbers, red numbers, orange numbers etc etc. Hydraulic crossers on headshot, 135% critical chance when aiming for 9 seconds. This one is obtainable from Lua Spy Missions, link in the card right now if you wanna know an easy mode way to farm Lua Spy Missions. Don't worry about it, all you need is a limbo, it doesn't even need to be max rank. Now those are a couple of options, a lot of players also enjoy punch through. Punch through currently in Warframe is a very big deal and sometimes it gets ignored, even I am guilty of that. Seeker 2.1 meters worth of punch through. That means that your bullets will be going through the initial target and hit multiple. So basically it adds a form of AOE to the weapon. Especially if you guys have a Nidus or a Voban that can clump enemies together. Keep in mind though that Nidus might take offense to that. So there you go. Might want to apologize for that. That being said, if I really want to proc Corrosive, then I'm going to need more on the weapon. Simply because currently Corrosive isn't much of a competition to Puncture. So I can add the 90% mod Convulsion or Pathogen Rounds. As you can see, it doesn't matter which of the two I add. The result will be the same. This is going to be our initial build. And this is what I'm recommending to you guys. With the exception of the option slot. Again, that one is entirely up to you guys. We're going to be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Gunner level 120. These are some very tough targets above Sortie 3. So this should be a worthwhile test. I'm going to go for flat headshot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Usually it takes about 15 shots. 12 to 15 shots to kill one of these high level targets. Depending on how lucky I get with my corrosive procs. You saw there that my subsequent shots dealt more and more damage. That is because of the corrosive I am constantly applying to the target. So that's why I'm dealing more and more damage. Less armor, so therefore my bullets will be hurting a whole lot more. Now that for an MR8 weapon, from my point of view at least, is pretty impressive. It does a whole lot of damage. 
The Lex Prime, however, is more satisfying when you're running level 50-ish level missions, 60, something like that, and you can one-shot each and every single target if you manage to get a headshot. Oh, don't misunderstand, you can one-shot even higher level enemies, let's say 80, 90, even 100, but they cannot be corrupted heavy gunners. If you're looking like something like Elite Crewman, for example, without any armor, just shield, then yeah, you can one-shot them with the legs with no problem at all. Now that is pretty good from my point of view. Again, if you can get past the usability issues, the recoil, the small magazine size, and of course, um, the long reload time. Now we're gonna switch to a Prime setup. Normally this is when I showcase a Riven. Unfortunately, the Lex Prime's Riven disposition is only 1 out of 5. This is the price weapons pay for a high popularity. If a weapon is very popular, that means that the Riven disposition will be fairly low, so the Rivens will be kind of weak. And you're gonna need to get a Riven which is worthwhile, you're gonna need it to be a really, really good roll. You can look for damage, multi-shot, critical chance, critical damage with a harmless negative. But again, at the Riven Dispo of 1, the values on the Riven are simply too low for me to recommend. And of course, this is the exact same setup as before, only with Prime Pistol Gambit and Prime Target Cracker. We got a 71.8 critical chance and a multiplier of 4.0. So it is a Pretty decent increase all in all considered and you get prime mods from Battle Kit here, the Void Trader or the Trade Chat. Obtaining the mods themselves isn't very difficult, unfortunately they require a truck ton of endo in order to max out. Now if you just got a couple of prime mods, you don't need to fully max them out if you don't have all the endo. What you can do is simply let one or two from the top and that will still be a massive increase over the normal version. So as you can see, yes they do make one hell of a difference and I do recommend you pick up both Prime Pistol Gambit and Prime Target Cracker. And don't worry about it or hurry through some sort of content to buy it from the trade chat. You don't need to do that, just simply wait until battle brings them. Because we are getting prime mods all the time. For example, about a week ago we got prime charge shell for shotguns, which put some weapons which were already very strong even more over the top. But as you can see, for the Lex Prime itself, those two prime mods do make one hell of a difference. As for Rivens... If you love this weapon and you absolutely must have one, then ball means go for it once again. Prioritize damage, multi-shot, critical chance, critical damage. These are the four primary stats you should be looking for. Harmless negative would be something like minus zoom, for example, or perhaps damage to infested, etc, etc. Now, there's one more thing that I do want to do, pump up everything with Warframe buffs. And we're going to be using Lady Mirage Prime as she is my favorite weapon specialist. For an aura, we're gonna be using Pistol Lamp. Pistol Lamp will get you 27% extra damage to pistols. This is an aura, so everybody in your party will be enjoying this benefit, and it is stackable times 4. You can also use a drift to pump up the value of Pistol Amp. It's called Co-Action Drift. And this one can be a tad confusing. You might not understand exactly how much more am I getting from Pistol Lamp. Check out the wiki. They have a nice easy to understand table there with all of the values. When it comes to arcanes, these are a lot more impactful. And the best arcane you can get is called Precision. Farmable from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. On headshot, 80% chance for plus 120% damage to pistols for 8 seconds. A DR free for this one on the trade chat I believe is going for about 100, 150 plat, but I might remember wrong. Check Warframe Market for more appropriate prices. As for your second Arcane, you can go for something like Arcane Awakening. Arcane Awakening is very cheap, as you can see I can't get rid of the stuff. On reload, 40% chance for plus 100% damage to pistols for 16 seconds. And you can further increase that awesome base damage that the Lex Prime has. Unfortunately, the problem with Arcane Awakening is that it's, well, not very reliable. It's an on reload effect, the reload is quite long and it's only a 40% chance. You do have the option of going for Velocity. Arcane Velocity will increase your fire rate, 80% fire rate to pistols for 6 seconds. Unfortunately, you can't really make use of the fire rate on the Lex Prime without reducing the recoil, so there you go. Pick and choose your favorite. Avenger is also an option, but from my point of view, Awakening together with Precision. Normally, when I run missions, I don't necessarily use both of the Arcanes in order to pump up my damage. What I do is use one Arcane for the weapon and one for the Warframe. Something like Energize or perhaps... Uh, Guardian for the armor. Activate Mirage's further ability for a massive damage increase as well as the clones. Now let's see what the Lex Prime can do. One, two, three, four shots to take out one of these high level targets. In the past there used to be an issue in the simulacrum. Paused AI targets used to take additional damage, a stealth multiplier from ranged attacks. 
Thankfully that has not been the case for quite some time now, but there is still one bug in the simulacrum. If I was to hit these targets with a melee weapon then some multipliers would apply, but as it is now they are not taking extra damage. And as you can see the Lex Prime can be an absolute beast, a monster of a weapon. With buffs such as this you can one shot super high level enemies and to be honest you're not gonna see these guys just about everywhere. Kuva for example is a very popular survival because it gives you the resource you need in order to roll your ribbons. And in Kuva you need to stand about 40 to 50 minutes to see level 100 so keep that one in mind. Hitting moving targets of course is a lot more difficult than hitting stationary targets so this should be a bit more realistic. Let's see what the Lex Prime can do. Again it's all about that headshot when it comes to this level of damage. If you can get a headshot you're gonna be all good. If not well not as good but just take a look at those numbers. It is absolutely bloody glorious. If you enjoy the Desert Eagle gameplay style then you're gonna have an absolute blast with the Lex Prime but perhaps you want something more Blazing Bulletstorm style then look into the Dex Purist or the Axomati. That's a very different approach to secondary weapons so pick and choose your favorite. I have only good memories of the Lex Prime so I cannot not recommend it for Mastery Rank 8 of course. If you're a bit higher in Mastery Lockout you do have other weapons to check out, link in the cards right now. Thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review then by all means leave it in the comment section down below. Now I can't realistically promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week because these reviews normally take a bit of time. But you can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time my friends, bye bye.